All right, that was a lot of holes drilled. So I got all of my holes put in, put my T-nuts in, and then just screwed these two plates together. Um, it's no big deal, I, I didn't show that. You just come up from the bottom and fire a lot of screws in. You wanna put them, you know, space them around the center and space them around the edges. The only thing I did when I put the screws in was I kept away from my front and back edges for right now because the fences are going to bolt up through that. So this is the next part that we want to get to is making the front and back fences. And I've already cut my parts to size and you can see I have my, uh, my front fence just sitting here. It's not put together yet. But what this is is three layers of half inch plywood. So a solid front face and then these little pieces that go in and then another solid face behind it. So the reason there's these smaller pieces in here is that this fence oops, is going to attach to the base uh, via these long bolts, uh, washers and nuts. So these openings will be the room that the bolt can come up through. Uh, this is a 3 8 inch bolt. I have about half inch square openings that I allowed for. Um, this means that after it's together, uh, I'll be able to shift this fence around a little bit to get my position square. And then all you do is you come in, you just really tighten down on these nuts with some washers underneath. Uh, and you can get this, you know, held down really firm and really square. Uh, as for the height, uh, I opted for uh, I'm about 2 and 3 quarter inches. Uh, and my total blade height here is just two inches, so that gives me about three quarter inches up top. Uh, I originally had it taller than that, uh, but it just seemed unwieldy, like I'd be constantly reaching over the fence to get in and work with pieces down here. Uh, and honestly, I'd be surprised if I'm ever at the full two inch blade height. Uh, you know, I'm cutting small puzzle pieces, uh, you know, not two inch blocks of wood here or anything. So what we're going to do with these is we're going to drop screws in all over. I'll be putting quite a few in from both sides. Uh, one of the instructions online is to put screws through the first layer of the second layer uh, on a slightly oversized hole and only have it bite into the third layer. And you would do that from both sides. Uh, and this allows you to, when you're doing the final assembly of the fence, sort of put all your screws in, leaving them just a little bit loose so you can kind of come in here and you can really, you know, use the surface of your saw, make sure the bottom is good and flat, uh, and then start tightening down as you move along. Because what you want is for this bottom edge to be real flat so that it rides perfectly flat on here and you keep a nice square base and then you get real good contact with those bolts. So I already have uh, both of these cut. Uh, what I did was I came in, uh, where's my... Yeah, so I just sort of uh, laid down one of my pieces on here, said, okay, if I come in about three inches from each edge, uh, then on this side I could come in seven inches, this side is seven and a half inches, and that gives me six and a quarter in the middle. What you want to do is just lay your piece down, and then you can say, okay, where is my runners, where is my blade, because I want to make sure I don't have to put bolts there. So you, know, so you put a bolt um, you know, somewhere in this area, and then somewhere back over in here, you know, up in here. Uh, the positioning, not real important. Basically, you just want to be in a little from the end, stay away from your runners, and stay away from your blade. Uh, obviously, when I'm screwing these pieces together, I won't want to put any screws right in the center of this where the blade can hit them uh, when it's going to cut through the fence. Those are really the only important parts to uh, pay attention to. Uh, when you are getting your bolts, basically, you just want to make sure that uh, when you come up from the bottom, that you're just a little bit taller than your fence uh, so that you have room to get washers and uh, you know, one or two nuts on there to really lock them down. Uh, so that's all. I'm going to go and uh, start drilling all the pilot holes to screw these together and once I get to that point uh, we'll come back and then we'll put our mounting holes in the uh, plates and that'll finish up the, uh, the main part of this build. Okay, the fences are cut. Center pieces are cut, uh, and I stopped just short of putting in uh, all the screws that I have to kind of show you how I was making this. 
Uh, so we can see I've got all these items, all these screws in the front. Uh, none of these are in super tight yet. So if I wanted to, I could still knock the fence around a little. And you'll be able to see that what I have on here are holes that go down in along with a recess hole. And then uh, down at the bottom, it's only big enough for the uh, threads of the screw. So what I did was I drilled the, the pilot hole that the screw would need all the way through. Then I took a Forstner bit, drilled out this top section. Uh, and then finally came back through and chased the hole uh, two-thirds of the way through, um, big enough so that the screw would slide in easily. And what it is, is that these screws are set such that uh, it will go... Let me get my hand out of the way there. Uh, the screw, once it's in all the way, the, uh, the larger part of the hole will be through the two boards, and then the smaller pilot hole will just be in the back third board. And then obviously that would be the, the same on the other side. You go through two boards with a larger hole, pilot hole just in the third part of it. And the reason this other hole is here is to catch the washers that are on here. Uh, and it gives you a lot of bearing surface or when you um, put these in place. So I'll just go ahead and get this last one in. You can see it kind of drops right in there. We'll go in. Yeah, there's a lot of these screws, so uh, I did the first one by hand. Then I'm like, that's too many. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch to power here and take care of the rest. <laughs> so the reason it's good to keep them all a little bit loose is when you get the fence together, you can use something like the surface of your table saw. Uh, any other really good flat surface, you know, a joiner bed would work. Uh, but table saws tend to be nice and flat, and you can... Kind of take a look at this. Does it wobble anywhere? Um, do I have any side-to-side -side play? Anything going on? Now, I already got this pretty flat, but if you wanted to, if anything was a little bit off before these screws are coming, before these screws are tightened down, you come in here with a little mallet. You could tap things into place. Uh, if anything doesn't move enough, you might want to actually back your screws out again, drill your um, larger holes a little bit bigger so that you have a little bit more play to shift it around. Uh, but mine's looking pretty good, so you know at this point I just have to come in and start tightening things down. Yeah, hard for me to hit it at that angle. And these are made so that the uh, screw head and the washer are just below the surface. So really, you just do this all the way along. Um, it's not a bad idea to do some of your ends in one or two of the middles to get those in and then kind of keep an eye on your progress as you go along so that you don't tighten down one screw uh, and ended up pulling something else out of place. Uh, but if you just kind of take your time, work across, everything should go pretty well. Uh, and then we'll come back on the last part, which is to put this guy up here and drill out the holes and mount the front and back fences on. And then we are close to finishing. Here I've just gone and marked out the locations of where my bolt holes are going to go. So I just transferred my measurements over uh, from the edges in, marked out the square, hit my center point, and then I just did this uh, all along the board. So um, the full edge uh, as well as the leading edge, uh, which is also out there with the, uh, the other post already getting ready to get mounted on it. So I'm going to go uh, drill these out, and my uh, goal here is, since I know that I have a 3 8 inch bolt, uh, I'm going to drill this at a 3 8 inch through, and then from underneath, I'm going to drill um, a wider hole so that this head can recess up into it. Uh, and that way it won't, uh, won't drag on the table at all, because we want to make sure it stays up off the table. So that's the plan. Uh, it should only take a few minutes, and uh, hopefully this part will be done. Alright, and finally we are putting our fence on. Uh, you'll see that what I have are the bolts coming up through. Like I said, there's just a recess underneath. Uh, I think you know what that looks like. I don't probably don't have to flip it over to show that one. 
So just set your fence down over top. And I just had it on there, it should go back. And our bolts stick up a little bit, drop on some washers on each. Uh, I'm just using two. I don't know if you really have to, it just seemed like it worked for me. So gives me some nice bite. And then finally you come back through with your bolts. Uh, they may spin a little bit underneath, but right now I'm just getting them started. And then I can slide the fence out, hold the bolt from underneath, and get them all on. I'm just doing the end ones here that you can't see. That they are in place and finally the opposite side I already got the front on uh, one thing to remember since this isn't going to be the true fence uh, we don't have to be super duper square so I got it pretty close uh, about as close as I could but since we're not actually going to use it as a fence uh, it doesn't have to be super duper dead on we're actually going to put on that auxiliary fence later and square that so now I can come in with a wrench and start tightening these down uh, the back one obviously you know we don't care too much about uh, but I do want it to be fairly close so should back this guy back off a little bit I'm sort of feeling my position around it. And if I want to, I could even take... Uh, let me grab one of my squares. Yeah, if I just want to take a, a little check, I can drop a, a square down here. Yeah, that does not look too bad. I think that's a... Uh, Plenty fine for the back fence. <laughs> like I said, if uh, if things go well as you put this together, it should wind up fairly square. And if your uh, things are spinning too much, you can always come from underneath with uh, another wrench and hold that. Uh, obviously, I think you would know how to do that by now. And we just square these or uh, tighten these down. Uh, we can even, as you tighten them down, you'll probably feel the the uh, heads underneath dig in a little bit. That's okay. It just means they're really locked in place. Uh, and then we just go on to putting our secondary fence on, and uh, the bulk of this unit is done. Uh, at this point, too, you do want to be sliding it somewhat to make sure you're not binding anywhere. Uh, this feels good to me. Uh, moves pretty easily. Just a little bit of tension, so... Um, you don't have to worry about, you know, pushing it and throwing it right off, but there's not so much tension that it's hard to move, uh, is what you want to look for. <clears throat> and obviously, since you have a little play, you can probably, uh, you know, just kind of uh, pull it apart or push it in to try to get that tension right where you want it. All right.